If you don't feel anything from this image, you've got heart of stone. I may have taken the best photograph, the best, <laughs> my photograph. I may have taken my best photograph of 2017 and um, it might even be in my top 10 favorite images. Um, my images, not, not of all time. I'm not that arrogant, not, not of all time. This, um, I took this photograph uh, last week or the week before last in Finland. And when I took the photograph, I wasn't convinced. I thought it was a nice image, it had some potential, but I didn't get too excited. But when I got the raw file into Lightroom, I, I could vis it didn't look right, obviously, the raw file was, just looked terrible, but I could see the potential that the image had and I could visualize how I wanted it to look. So then starts the editing process. Um, usually I don't do a great deal of editing to my landscape images, but on this occasion I did more than I usually would and that's because I could see in my mind's eye what I wanted this image to look like and I've pretty much achieved it. You know, I might continue to do a few more tweaks here and there. Um, but I'd basically, in this video, I'd really like to talk you through the editing process of this image. It's also a great opportunity for me to use the loop deck more. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. But first of all, we're just gonna jump straight into this and I'll show you the before, middle, and final image. So the first thing I'm gonna to do to this image is reduce the exposure. It is ever so slightly overexposed and that's because when you shoot landscapes, especially scenes like this that are relatively flat, um, it always pays to shoot to the right to make sure that you capture all of the details in the shadows. You can see this was actually a tricky exposure um, to shoot because we have this silver birch tree which is incredibly uh, bright or very hot and then you've got deep shadows in the blacks so I had to expose this to the right to capture all of the details in those shadows without burning out the silver birch tree. So a tricky exposure. So I'm just going to drop my exposure down to about just less than one stop. Yeah, so I'll take about one and a bit stops off. Now this, you can see, is giving me a lovely dark image. We've got all of the detail maintained in the focal point, which is the bright silver birch tree. Just going to add a touch of contrast. Again, raw files always come out of the can very flat. So the next thing I want to do is see if I can just recover slightly more detail in these highlights. Um, mm, there's a slightly distracting area over to the left of the image. I'm just gonna drop my highlights ever so slightly. Now I want this image, I want it to be, um, I want it to be ethereal. I, I want it to be dark and moody and soft and dreamy. I don't want it to just look like a picture of a forest and you know and there's a silver birch tree in the forest. I want it to be more than that. I want it to be a bit more artistic. So I'm going to bring my highlights um, quite far down. I'm just trying to flatten everything off. Normally what I would do in a situation like this is you reduce the highlights and you lift the shadows but I'm actually going to drop the shadows here. Let's bring them all the way down. I want a dark contrasty image. Right, so the birch tree is looking a little bit flat. So if I just lift the white a tiny bit, then that should really give that birch tree a bit more pop. Um, overall, giving, giving the entire image more contrast. But what I want, I want the viewer's eye to go straight to that silver birch tree. That's my goal. Next, we have the clarity slider. I do not want to touch that. I don't want to add any sharpness or any clarity. Actually, I would like to reduce that, but I'm just gonna leave it for now and save that job for Photoshop. Saturation, right. What I love about this image is it's an image of two halves. You have the lower half, which is almost monochrome with just jet black and then the, the white silver birch. And then the top half, you've got these lovely warm golden browns. So I actually wanna increase the saturation of this image which shouldn't have any effect on the lower half of the image, but on the top half, it's uh, it's gonna look really nice. I'm just dialing this up and we can see, you don't wanna go too far, you don't wanna overdo it. You just wanna just lift it a touch, you know, just subtle changes make all of the difference. We're not trying to, we're not trying to knock the viewer out. That's not what we're trying to do. It's all about subtlety. I'd also like to warm the image up uh, just to, again bring out those warm orange tones of the pine trees so again you've got to be careful here because i actually really like the cool blues in the in the black 
thick um, charred wood and the, the cool blues that are reflecting off the silver birch. So I don't want to overdo this, just a touch of warmth to um, yeah, really make those colours pop. Okay, that is me about done in Lightroom. The last thing I would like to do is to crop the image because I really think this is going to suit more of a letterbox crop. Now, sadly, the loop deck um, in this prototype that I have, the crop button does nothing other than rotate, um, which is not what I'm after, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to go over to my mouse um, and I'm just going to you know, it's going to lose a bit of the foreground, basically. Um, just a tiny bit there, just to give it more of a letterbox, uh, more of a more of a wider format. So I'm happy with how the image looks in terms of its exposure, the contrast, the colours. What I'm really not happy with is you can see, look how gritty the image is. Look how harsh it is. It looks almost it's like the visual equivalent of sandpaper. Um, it's it's too much. It's distracting. I, I, I want the viewer to have a more pleasurable experience when seeing this image. So I'm going to take this image over to Photoshop and uh, we're going to add a couple of quick effects in there and we're also going to remove a couple of distractions as well. Okay, so those of you that watch BBC Spring Watch, Winter Watch and Autumn Watch and have an interest in wildlife photography, you will have heard of Chris Packham. I'm a big fan of Chris Packham. And I went to one of his talks last year, um, so he's also a, a very talented wildlife photographer. And he introduced me to a concept that I've never really thought about nor heard of, and I'm now going to pass it on to you. And it's called the squint test. Um, now what you do is you look at your image and you squint your eyes, or you, you just make your vision a bit blurry. And what that does is it simplifies the image, and you can see in your peripheral vision, you can see things, you can see things that are distracting, things that shouldn't be there. So by doing, looking at the image and doing the squint test, your eye can immediately go to something that is distracting that shouldn't be there. I mean, obviously I can see my silver birch, that's brilliant, that's supposed to be there, but what I can also see is this stray twig. Now, obviously when I'm on site, I am not gonna touch nor remove it. Uh, that, that would be criminal. So uh, I can get rid of that in Photoshop, that's fine. I can also see there's something over here in the bottom right corner. We'll get rid of that. Um, and a couple of something here as well. But just squint, just look at your image and just squint your eyes a little bit. And you'll, honestly, it works. Do the squint test, courtesy of Chris Packham. Not my trick. Right, so first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of the loop deck. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of the loop deck because you can't use Photoshop with the loop deck. Um, I am going to get rid of this branch here. So I've got my selection tool. It's set to four pixels of feather, which is fine. Now, uh, honestly, I, I don't, I'm not a Photoshop wizard. I just like to keep things as simple as I possibly can. I really don't see any need for me to try and get really clever. Uh, this is probably quite an easy image to edit because it's it's so dark so it's easy to disguise stuff. So all I'm going to do is go around this twig, hit delete, content aware, and I'm going to let Photoshop do all of the hard work. There you go, it's done, it's done a really good job. That's tiny, tiny little little hint of a line there, we'll just get rid of that. There we go, but Photoshop has done a stellar job, sort of, right, okay, we can see here, we've got, we've got a line here, let's see if we can stamp that out. That's gone. That was really, really simple and straightforward. I'm just gonna get rid of a couple of other distractions here, this, bothered me. Um, what else? What's this? See, that's just... There we go. There you go. Get rid of that. A few distractions gotten rid of. Simple. Um, the next thing I want to do is soften the whole image and give it a lovely ethereal look. You've probably seen images taken in woodland that look soft yet sharp. Um, they're blurry yet there's detail. Um, now this is a technique that's really simple to do. 
I learned this technique from Nick Page. I watched one of his YouTube videos. I'll stick it somewhere here, there, one of these corners. And it's a simple technique. I got, I got it from him. Um, and I have applied it to this image and it works really well. What I'm gonna do is, it's a really simple concept. Essentially, you just duplicate your layer. Okay, there we have two images identical. Uh, this image here, the top layer, I'm just going to blur, okay? It's dead simple. I'm just going to go into the Gaussian blur and blur it, 28.9, because that's what it's set to, that's what it was. By the way, when doing this type of editing, always have a play. Go this way, go that way. Um, don't just stick to one sort of factor, if you will. Don't, you know, it's, it's very much trial and error. Every single image is different. So there we have a blurry image. The next thing I'm going to do is adjustment levels and what I want to do is make the highlights shine so I'm just going to drag the highlights over there we go just not too much we don't really want them to burn out and I'm just going to drop the shadow there we go like that okay um, so now we have this blurry image that's almost glowing and then we just reduce the opacity until it looks soft and ethereal. I want all of the attention to be on that silver birch. So what I'm going to simply do is create a layer mask. I'm very, very fast and loose. I'm just going to paint out the top layer that I've just created, you know, the blurry layer that's on top. I'm going to paint that out over the tree so that the tree actually remains nice and sharp. There we go. It's, I mean, it's so subtle. There's, you know, there's not going to be any ghosting or any halos or anything like that. Just get rid of that and just, just there we go. And all it does is it just brings back the sharpness. I've got to say, when I was on location and took the image, I thought there was potential for a nice image. I wasn't too excited. Then when I got the image into Lightroom, although it looked horrible, the uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look at the original image. So. That's the, uh, let me reset that. There we go, there's the original raw file and there's the edit. So this is what I pictured in my mind. This is the edit. When I got this back into the edit suite, I had to visualize how I wanted it to look. So um, it's not just visualizing things out in the field, it's also visualizing in the um, editing software as well. Now moving on to this week's HPOW. I didn't do one last week because where was I? I was in the, the forests of Finland. Um, but the week before that I loved that image. Uh, if you remember it was one with the um, island and the huge cloud above the island and I thought it was really nice. Well this week's image is just a little bit different. Um, I've said from the beginning, uh, I think somebody asked me in the comment section if the HPOW, which is Heaton's photo of the week, if it does it have to be landscape? I said, of course not. An image, that's the beauty of photography. Um, it's like art, you know, it doesn't have to be a specific genre to really, really evoke um, emotions in somebody, you know, or anything like that. So and this, this is an interesting image, okay? Now this may not be to everyone's taste, but you look at this image and you tell me that you don't see a story here. You don't see him. If you don't feel anything from this image, you've got Heart of Stone. Because this, this is by um, C.Iwi. <laughs> why, why does everybody have these names on Instagram? Siwi Kiwi C, C .iwy. And she's posted an image of a snail on a rock. Now who would have thought that you could post an image of a snail on a rock and it would really bring out and stir some real emotions? Well, it just does. Like it isn't this well-rehearsed, super sharp, stacked, well-lit image taken in an aquarium or something like that. This, <laughs> this snail has turned and looked at the camera for a second, or probably a minute, because it's a snail. But it just, uh, there is something there. There is something about this image. This snail is, uh, this could be a character in a children's book. Um, I just think it's great. I think this, uh, this girl has captured a moment in an incredibly unusual subject. And 
it's great, it works, and I love it. I love this image, so absolutely well done. Um, I'd love to see an image of a snail that stirs more emotions and asks more questions than this image. How did the snail get there? Where's it going? Is it stuck? Is it going to drown? Why is he looking back? What's he thinking? I have so many questions. And just a really pleasant image to look at. It makes me happy. You know, I love it when images make me happy, and this one does. So if you want to submit an image uh, for so I can you know use it as Heaton's photograph of the week, just use the hashtag HPOW on Instagram and follow me at Heaton Thomas. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed or learned something. I hope you've learned something from this. Um, and yeah, until next time, bye for now. Um, I need quick time. Quick time. Quick time. Of course. Of course.